wine connoisseuring, but we love it. Like, the parties, the tastings, what foods go well with stuff. Like, I love to cook my dinner, to pair it with the bottle of wine I picked up at my local grocery store. Like, that is my favorite thing to do. Um, I can plan an entire week around that. Like, I don't know if other people have, like, that same, like, ugh, this just makes me happy. (laughs) But this just makes me happy. And And I love cooking. So, I tend to cook for all the friends. Yeah, and then you pick a great cook. Yeah, and she's like, "Ooh, I'm gonna do this." I'm like, "Girl, I got you. I tried this and this the other day, and I think this would be really good to go with this." And like, that's just where my brain goes. Some people love it. Some people are like, "Really, girl? Like, that's a hobby?" And I'm like, "It is. It's a hobby. It's not an. It's an expensive hobby. Yes. And obviously, I can't do it all day every day because then I'm an alcoholic." <laughs> But on the occasion that I get to pair my wine with my food, I'm a happy girl. So, that's one of our fun things. Um, If you ever host a wine tasting party, FYI, we want to be invited. Please. Yeah, preferably driving distance, um, but... But at least via Zoom. We all know how to do it now. That's right. You send us pics, we'll participate. Like, And we'll give you options of food. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like with this wine, we were talking about different spicy foods possibly going with it well. I think a spicy food would go very well with this. Like, it's just got a nice, soft finish. Like, it's a long finish, but it's soft. And so I think a spicy, like, Mexican dish would go really well with this. You could think... Chicken and rice. You could think of chicken and rice. You could think of, like, enchiladas might be really good with this. Absolutely. Get some oil in there. Mm, Now I'm getting hungry. (laughs) Um, But totally, like, spicy foods, fantastic. I think they would be great. Um, So why we're getting into this podcast is because while we've been sitting around sipping our wine during our dinners at home, we got to thinking, why does no one tell you all this shit about motherhood? Absolutely. I just don't understand. Like, they don't tell you anything. Like, they hand you a baby and they go... There you go. That's where's, it. Where's the preparation? There is no prep. There is no, like, uh, rule book. Y'all, I need a book with rules. Just FYI. Like, that's the type of person I am. I need it written out, and I need somebody to tell me how this works. That's so true. However, taking that step to reading a how-to book, not 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 my <laughs> idea of a fun Saturday. So, we wanted to tell y'all our experiences through our type of modality like listening to podcasts right so the very like i have three kids we put that out there already so the first one i wanted to be a good mom i was young real young just out of high school and i thought this would be easy like i raised my youngest sister like well i say raised her i mean like i lived in the household with her we're like 12 to 13 years apart So, it's a big age gap. At that point, your parents, like, hand you a baby, and they're like... And you have to help. You have to help. (laughs) So, obviously, we have that going for us. But by the time my second came around, I thought, I'm going to be a better mom, and I'm going to breastfeed like everybody keeps telling me to do. And I want y'all to know that that is hard. Like, that's what they don't tell you, is that breastfeeding is hard. And so, shout out to all the moms that do it. Shout out to even the moms that make it look easy, because I know that shit ain't easy. And y'all make it look easy. So I bring home this baby. I've been trying to breastfeed her at the hospital. We go in for our checkup. She's not gaining weight. I'm crying in the doctor's office. Thank God for a great pediatrician. Absolutely. Um, Which, by the way, you should have one if you don't. And he sets me down and he's like, look, it's not for everybody. It's not your fault. He goes, it's hard. And he goes, you know, not everybody can breastfeed their babies. And it's okay if this is not for you. So, we did end up switching to formula. My milk, like, never came in with her. It was absolutely awful experience. Like, I cried and cried and cried over that. Because that's what you're taught. You're supposed to want to do for the best of your baby. provide. Yeah. It's what you're supposed to do. And so, I wish somebody had sat me down five days before that doctor did to tell me that it might not work out for me. And nobody did. And so, this is for all of you who don't know have never breastfed, maybe you're pregnant, maybe you plan to have kids, but just know that there's some of the shit that they don't tell you is hard. So hard. 
And then sometimes when things don't work out, you need someone to give you some affirmation and say, you know what, you tried really hard. And along those lines, when we have our family members that truly have the best intentions, but may or may not be able to commit the time and energy that you feel is necessary by them, keep in mind, everyone's going through different situations. And if my family member calls and says, I really wish I could be there for you today, but I can't, I have to dig down deep and say, that's okay, because that is what you can give me, which is moral support. And if I need to phone call someone because I've been dealing with blowout diapers every three hours for the last three days, then can I call you? And if that's all you can give, that's amazing, because sometimes you just need to hear another adult's voice. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Set your limits and your expectations. You know, it's okay to do so, because you're trying, they're trying, babies are trying, right? Sometimes. (laughs) God bless them. (laughs) Or throwing wild-eyed fish. Yeah, everybody's trying, right? And shit just happens. E. coli happens. Exactly. E. coli happens. Because we have little kids that are now parrots, and so we do have to watch what we say. My son says frog, and it really sounds like fuck all the time. All the time. All the time. Every time my kid tries to say truck, it's exactly what you think you'd say. (laughs) So, um, I am one of the worst cursors, I think. We know. Yeah, um, probably I'm probably true. I'm very bad. Uh, yeah. Rosie, that's that's me. Um, but I like to use these stand-in words, and using something like E. coli happens instead of shit happens makes my little world happy because I find that clever. <laughs> and, if the, and if they say E. coli, then everybody's like, well, that's just weird. But nobody judges you as a mom. No. But if your kid, kid starts cussing out, like, anywhere in public... You're totally being judged. You're going to get judged whether or not you think it's important in in the world of your toddler. It's true. It's happening. I mean, I'm going to think it's hilarious if it's somebody else's kid. Now, if it's my kid, I'm obviously going to be embarrassed and be like, I told you we keep those words at home. But it's fine. It's fine. fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's part (laughs) of it, right? It's part of it. It's trial and error. And so everything that we have learned is trial and error, right? Like the whole goal of parenting And I think motherhood, besides loving your child and providing for them, is keeping them out of the ER. Absolutely. Um, And those $4,000 bills. Yeah. Or more. (laughs) I'm not always successful at that. So we have, Rosie and I have very different parenting styles. Um, I'm the mom. We're, like I said, on number three here. And so we're at the playground and my kid's climbing up there and he's like hanging off the top and I'm like, it's okay. He bounces if he falls. But Rosie, on the other hand, is myself, not that mom. <laughs> I have a very strong, powerful, powerful lizard brain. If you don't know what that is, it basically means that whenever something happens that's like life or death, my brain goes into hyperdrive. I'm going to try to survive and keep the others around me to survive. So I'm the person that when something happens, even if it's not my child... I run to the aid of that child, whether or not the parents want that. So similar to things like uh, I was in a store and I was looking at some neon signs that were relatively low and a child ran up and just like grabbed the glass neon sign and the glass part. And I said, no, no, honey, that's hot. That's hot. And I went into panic mode and I touched him and it wasn't my child. It wasn't anyone I knew. Um, and of course y'all know culture today, you're not allowed to touch other people. Don't touch other people. So then the mother runs up and gets angry and started yelling at me. And I said, I'm sorry. I was just trying to protect them. Um, but that's, that's my lizard brain. I can't, I can't take culture into account when something happens. I will try to save all the children. Just reactive. And it causes me to be a little bit of a helicopter mom. (laughs) A little bit. (laughs) Our kids play together all the time. And so... Like, we're at the playground, like, Rosie's kid's on the top, and she's the mom that's standing at the bottom ready to catch him at all times, and I'm literally propped up on the bench, being like, I can see him, he's fine. He's still present in the playground. He's still fine. He's staying in where he was told to stay. Um, But was I like that with my first kid? Absolutely not. (laughs) I was the parent standing at the bottom being like, oh dear God, don't fall. Um, Probably caused him a lot of grief yes but you know that's 
part of it. Now I'm that mom that embarrasses them at the last day of school drop off by blasting, you know, any kind of music. I think I was blasting High School Musical. Oh, that's beautiful. Right? What uh, a wonderful way to leave the year. Right, I thought so. My daughter said I am highly embarrassing, and she dove out of the car before we got to the front of the school. So, <laughs> that remains to be uh, seen how cool I actually moms am. Moms and daughters. <laughs> versus how cool I think I am. Um, I'm also not allowed to use the word Gucci or, I don't know, she made like a whole list. I'm going to have to find it. Oh, Apparently, that'd be cute. Apparently, there's a list of things that moms are not allowed to say because... I wasn't aware. It's cringe. Oh, that's one of the words I'm not allowed to say. Cringe. Oh, okay. It's cringe. So, um, on the note of, though, of seriousness on ERs, like, you don't want your kid to go to an ER. They're full of bacterias. There's usually long waiting lines, depending on how big of a city you live in. Um... We don't live in, like, a huge city. But it's definitely heavily populated. But it's heavily populated, and so the the wait times are just ridiculous. And people go in, you know, for everything. So the goal is to keep your kid happy, healthy, safe, but to also be prepared to do things at home. I live way out in the boondocks, y'all, so I don't live near town. It takes me a while to get there. My son fell playing outside. He's running down the driveway. He trips over his own two feet. Lands face first. Those ghost holes. I know, those damn ghost holes. Lands face first in our rock driveway. Giant gash on his head. I don't know this because I'm inside doing, I don't know, I might have been cooking dinner. Yes. It was later in the day. I like to cook, y'all. It's a thing. Rosie cooks. I cook. It's a thing. So, uh, my husband comes in and the baby's crying and I'm like, oh, what happened? And he's like, oh, he fell. (laughs) <laughs> it's not a big deal. And at that moment, my husband turns towards me, and there's literally blood flowing out of my son's face. This is absolutely how most significant others are. Is like, one will be like, oh my god, and the other will be like, um, you know, something happened. Yeah. <laughs> and it's because they don't want to get in trouble. That's yes. what it is. Yes, because they were on baby <laughs> duty. And so he's just holding a screaming baby with blood flowing down his face. And so I like go into so I'm really good in emergency situation y'all if the shit goes down I know where everything is and how to be prepared so I automatically go and I grab a towel and I'm like hold pressure and then I go get the stuff to clean the wound and refilling our glasses and uh and I'm like just on it and then I'm like ooh, how deep is it so I'm checking the wound still bleeding a little bit pressure back on it uh getting him clean clothes because obviously we're going to have to go to the hospital because by God, it's a deep cut y'all. It was huge. <laughs> and I couldn't like pinch it back together myself. Cause I'm that type of a person. I'm like, if I got my clean hands, y'all clean hands. I'm trying to pinch Always it back together hands. and it ain't going. And so, well, I know it's not going to heal without a giant scar. So I'm like, I'll just take him to the ER. Get it stitched. They'll, up. they'll like stitch him up or glue it or glue it. I hate it when they glue it y'all. It, it never stays. No. But I wish they would just throw a couple stitches in there and let me deal with that later. But, so we decide on the way into town that we're not going to go to an ER. We're going to go to an urgent care because it's still early enough in the day. This is my plug-in point. Y'all need to know the time of your closest um, urgent care because, A, they're cheaper than an ER. Yes, And, B, absolutely. they can usually get you in faster. So you're not sitting in a waiting room full of sick people. They can literally, like, bring you in sits you in a room and see you within like 20 minutes and they can do most minor procedures and prescribe because they are full physicians yeah yeah so why spend all the hours at an er for a stitch right i'm just going to take him to the urgent care so we take him the doctor seems really nice and he glues my son's forehead back together and slaps a giant band-aid on it Mm, let's suffocate it yeah oh yeah (laughs) i get it back and i was like well that's not appropriate That's not appropriate at all, because it hasn't finished swelling, right? Because head wounds, y'all, head wounds are going to swell. And they're going to bleed bad. And if you think that it's like a tiny cut, but oh my goodness, there's so much blood, it's because it's the head, or the hands, or the feet. Those bleed way more than it looks like it should. Absolutely. And so you're going to panic. Just put pressure on it, all right? Hold that shit together. Hold your shit together. Yes, absolutely. You panicking does not help the baby or the teenager. It makes for a much worse um, interaction with the doctors and the nurses. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Get your shit together. Because your kid is going to mimic your reaction. Absolutely. So just know that those things bleed and that you're going to have to take them somewhere. 